Well, very sorry to start the video this way. Um, we had a lovely day in Mount Edgecombe Country Park, finishing off Cornwall, very nice lunch at the Edgecombe Arms, and then we entered Plymouth. I don't have any good words to say about this place. It was a horrific uh, afternoon. We did some chores, went through the high street. Yeah, I'm speechless, to be honest. Um, so, I'd say this is the best view of Plymouth, i.e. the back of it. Um, and here's hoping South Devon can deliver a few more highlights than this. Well, I take some of it back. The sunset has appeased me. Plymouth never looked better. And after one of the locals' advice in the village bar, just got nestled in these trees near this radar station. Quite cosy. Should be a comfortable night. Well, it's a bluebird day today. It's going to be a hot one. Not a cloud in the sky. First time we've had a morning coffee outside. Too hot in there. But yeah, very nice. Well, we come across this sign, and after our elation at the 175 and a half miles to go on the edge of Plymouth, we now see we're back up to 206, so it's difficult to know to believe, but given my disdain for Plymouth, I'm thinking this is the more accurate number. Very nice lunch in the ship in at Nos Mayo. Recommend that one. Gorgeous day still. Lost some of the strong heat going around this headland. The views are amazing. And hopefully, you get a nice wild camping site and the end of the afternoon sunshine. Let's see what we can find. So another doozy of a campsite tonight. Really have forgotten about the pains of Plymouth now. We're on Hillsy Point. People pay good money for these kind of views. Yeah, happy with this. After the uh, wild camp last night, we've uh, got very low on water. Quite dry along this section of South Devon. No streams or anything. So, we've resorted to eating blackberries. <laughs> we've eaten enough of these, I've had a whole glass of Ribena. We gave it the remaining water to Barney, bless him. So, I don't think we've ever actually seen one of these in real life, but we've seen them on River Cottage. It's a giant puffball mushroom. You can actually empty these out and stuff them with interesting things inside and then cook them in the oven. Oh man, we've totally screwed up with the low tide times. It's 
Jill and Barney going across. So they got into a bit of a bit of current. They were intending going over to the boat ramp. They decided the beach section is a little bit easier and safer. So what happened there then? So, uh, it just proved so tricky, the river's coming in so quickly that we got about halfway through and the waves really started getting big and I was sitting up on the, the high seat in the middle with my pack and everything and the whole boat nearly tipped over and he went, oh my god, you're going to have to get your pack off and sit on the floor. So I had to quickly slip off my pack and sit on the floor and try and steady the boat to stop us going in. But for a while there I really thought we were going to get wet. But I mean, bless their hearts for taking us across. It's a seven mile hike inland if you can't get across and we missed the tide completely. But yeah, that was, uh, that was a little bit hairy at points. <laughs> well, I think important to point out, you know, we don't have idyllic camping spots every night. So we've had to get practical. It's like some sort of derelict nightclub. Be hoping it'll open up a bit later. And to be fair, as is usually the case on the southwest coast path, there's actually a pretty decent view out to sea. We can't complain too much if you point the camera in the right direction. Need to catch a ferry this morning, but we ain't going out in this. Probably sounds worse inside the tent, but still. I think with the best will in the world, you couldn't really describe this as seen this. Kind of eerie walking up and down these cliffs in the the mist. You just get to see certain parts of the rocks and the waves down below. The bit we just left was quite stunning. Not too long today and then we've got a day and a half rest day. Hooray! So that's Berg Island shrouded in mist. You can see the beach at low tide. Well the ferry is somewhere down there. Is he running in this? That's a concern. Yeah. How far have you got to go? The sloop. <laughs> So the funny thing is, we spend our life sitting at home on the couch, watching TV, drinking wine, thinking wouldn't be great, doing adventures, but then we go on these adventures and then we sit in the tent thinking wouldn't it be great, sit on the couch, drinking wine <laughs> and watching TV, so... So that's what we do? Yeah. For a day and a half? Yeah. Back on the trail again. It's a nice day in Bantham. Gorgeous sunshine, always good for the first day. Get the spirits high. We're sort of heading into some of the busier towns this week. This is uh, halfway through week seven now. We've got Salcombe, Brixham, Torbay, Torquay, painting all those big places. So it's going to be busy busy surroundings lots of civilization might make while camping a bit of a challenge but yeah looking forward to it see what we experience this week
We're in Salcombe. We enjoyed the Devon pasty so much, we're just having to revisit the experience now in South Devon. Yeah, not sure about that one. It's kind of feels a bit Cornish. A bit dry. A bit dry. There's lots of potato, very little meat in it. And none of that lovely gravy sort of within the last one. Keep it going then. Well, what do you think? Pretty good, eh? Camping on the pig's nose after a short little visit to Salcombe. Pretty pleased with that. Still got the roof off the tent. Some hot chocolate, a bit of food. afternoon in the Pig's Nose pub. I think this is the first time we've dived into a pub because of bad weather and we've come out and we've still got back. Uh, I can't put my wet glasses because they get wet and they need windscreen wipers and my feet are wet. But weather prediction for the rest of the day is light rain and you know that just means on and off showers. We're still on an agenda, that's the problem. It's not like we can just camp down and avoid this. A desperate camp tonight. Need to uh, make some progress for tomorrow. So we've had to jump past a couple of nice looking wild camps. And just get a little bit closer to uh, street or stress, however you pronounce that. So we've just dived into the trees, escaped some of this weather. Well, this has been the wet section on our southwest coast path. Two consecutive nights of heavy rain. I guess coming up for one and a half or two days hiking through it. And when you're doing the full path, you haven't got the luxury of letting your morale get so low that you start to stop enjoying the trip. So, yeah, I guess you need to find ways your uh, motivation. Um, we've got a good routine now in terms of getting the tent up quickly. 
Jill gets all the gear out, all the dry clothing and sleeping gear out. I get the tent finished off, get the warm drinks and the food together. Um, failing that, I guess keep some money aside for these wet days so you can dive into some emergency accommodation. Otherwise it just eats away at you. We're already feeling it and that's only two days and it could be a lot, a lot worse in England. We've heard people where you have it for two weeks and they just have to stop the trip because they're just they're not enjoying it anymore. So yeah, Dartmouth for us today. I've just finished this uh, slapped and sand section, very flat 4x4 track, very quick to do. But yeah, more ferries to catch. Mine has been a bit miserable but he likes digging. He's a digger. He keeps his morale up by digging. <laughs> Well, pretty nice view, huh? Amazing the difference some uh, good weather can make. See the end of the land there. Can't quite, probably can't make out the lighthouse, but that's where we were last night. Uh, we've got some bits and pieces drying from the wet ordeal last night, and the tent's drying out nicely. So, one of the side effects of multiple days of rain is what we lovingly call trench foot. Oh, that does not look good, is it, that heel? Oh. Put it in front of Barney, see what he thinks. Think of that, Peps. Is that good? No, no, I'm <laughs> It's basically like leaving your feet in the bath for about 16 hours. Ugh. Ugh. It makes you prone to blisters and makes your feet very sore. It's not nice. <laughs> nice dinner tonight. Minted lamb kebabs, heated finger rolls and garlic mayonnaise. Perfect. Um, I was probably jinxed myself actually because chatting to a guy in the pub in Dartmouth and he said he's a runner, it's quite hilly this bit and we get a lot of people saying oh yeah watch out for the hills in that section and often it's quite tame but after telling them the story of how we didn't find Zen or difficult he then said yeah well I wear one of those Strava apps when I'm running and it reckons it's about 2,000 feet elevation um, which if you think about it, it's about two thirds of Scarfell Pike and it certainly feels like it last night and this morning so yeah, I think I'll stop with the is it really a steep hill commentary and uh, Since we have no 
idea where the official 500 mile marker is, somewhere after Babacoom at the end of um, Tor Bay, we've been told, but since we haven't found one, we've decided to make this archway our own 500 mile marker. <laughs> 500 miles! <laughs> So, do you think we need to put the rain fly sheet on tonight? You know this hotel's got a roof, right? Oh, yeah. Today, since crossing the river X into Exmouth, haven't really featured much footage of campsite life. Mainly because it looks like this, it all looks the same. This is quite a nice one though, Pratt's Hope. I might dub that later. But £10 cash. Perfect, really. Nice and quiet and sheltered. Pratt's Haze? Ooh, Pratt's Haze, that's it. But not much more to be said about the matter. Spent the afternoon in the pub, avoiding the rain. And now we're just going to do our normal routine. Chocolate food, chocolate, bed. <laughs> Oh, it's the most depressing start to day ever. We're lost in a rabbit while on a caravan. Well, one of the residents just advised us to, to scale the fence. So we did. Yeah, so we did. It's here. Jammed. There's a gate, but it ain't doing no good. It's jammed. <laughs> Bit of a misty start to the day. In fact, the rest of the week's looking a bit weird, so curb and the uh, photography and video. Yeah, we spent the last half an hour approaching this Budloy. I'm pronouncing it with a Dudloy accent. I'm not sure how the locals will take to that, but it's kept us amused. Uh, the feeling we've got now still very nice scenery up and down still fairly challenging but you know we're booked in for our last hotel stay in a few days time and we're already planning what day we're going to finish this so there is a kind of a downhill nearly at the end feeling to it Looking forward to getting home now. It feels like we've maybe experienced most that the past got to offer. But hey, let's not write it off just yet. We've got Dorset to come. Hopefully some great things to see there. Um, but yeah, almost week nine. Only hold till your coffee Again, how to spoil a spectacular view. Simple. Drop a massive caravan park next to it. Oh, 
that must be a hell of a view down there. Not that we can tell today in the mist. It's got to be about 10 benches all set out, looking out to sea. <laughs> Two good things about this misty weather. One is it keeps you cool on this very hilly section between Sidmouth and Beer. And two, you can't quite see the full extent of the horrors as to how high you have to climb. Is that a good thing? A bad thing? I don't know. Seems to be working. That wasn't even the worst bit. The worst bit was further down. So that was quite a long day. Um, just out of, outside of Exmouth to just beneath Branscombe, a place called Branscombe Down. As you can see, a bit of a grassy meadow section, quite quiet, out of the way. Didn't make it into Branscombe, supposed to be quite a pretty village. But uh, yeah, made good time. I think we'll uh, be glad of that tomorrow when we need to put another big day in. Barney's got his big bum on my sleeping bag and in my, in my section. That's a religion I can get on board with. So we're on the section between Axmouth and Lyme Regis. There's a sign here suggesting the track is closed ahead, which is annoying because we've just hiked about 20 minutes from the point maybe where it's suggesting we need to go around. I guess we'll keep going to see if there's some sort of diversion. I mean, you've got to be kidding me, haven't you? I can't believe this. I'm gonna have to hike all the way back now because they couldn't be bothered to put the sign at the beginning of the path. Right, well, I'm sorry for it, but we're gonna just go for it. We just chatted to a family who've just come through it and what can you expect when you put a sign halfway down right next to where it's closed as opposed to right up the junction point where people have got some options. So uh, I'm afraid David or whoever it was on that sign, uh, you kind of brought this on yourself. Well, I'm not advocating people should try this, but this is the extent of the first landslide, which is nothing really. I mean, we had bigger steps than that in North Devon, to be honest. Actually, I think this little bit is tougher for me with a massive backpack on. We have to resort to hands and knees for this bit. Go on, pups. Let's uh, let's see how you how you see this path. Right, this one's a bit more of a slippery challenge, but are you still there, Bunny? And the next one. Again, a bit tricky, but oh 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Go on, thunder thighs. Yeah, I can't do that with my pack on. The pack's gonna have to come off, I'm afraid. Hey, if Barney's not sure, I'm not. Go on, Barney, up yep, up yep. Yeah, this is probably the worst of them, but there's some nice natural steps inside here. Delicate footwork because it is a little bit wet from the last few days' rain. Hey, Babs, how you doing? Take that. Actually, it's really pretty when you get through some of these sections, almost rainforest like. Another obstacle, not signed this one, but as difficult. You sit there, perhaps. Funny, sit. Wait. 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 <laughs> Round two. Come down on my skin. I swear it helps if you've got longer legs. Oh. Oh. Where'd you? How ladylike was that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, one of the unfortunate downsides to wild camping is you've got to keep a lookout for water before you make camp. In this case, um, you know, it's a sort of a rainforesty section, you'd expect a lot of streams, but there's one main one uh, that we can rely on, and we've got a whole other map to go, which is probably another hour and a half. So, fortunately for me, I'm going to be carrying this extra weight, which is probably three or four kilos, which makes a bit of a difference on the old back. Taking my pack up to about 28 kilos. But hey, it's worth it for the flexibility. Um, and you're man enough, aren't you, babe? Yeah, and you don't want to be going through the night thirsty and not able to have a drink of cold water. So yeah, we suffer with the pain. And that's the way to do it. So, a bit of an unusual campsite tonight. Uh, got a bit tired, about 6.30. Uh, it's quite slow going in that woodland, if uh, you're a bit careful on your footing. Tree roots and muddy pathway. But yeah, we're sort of camped down here in the Whitland Cliff area. Hopefully that tree will behave itself and that branch isn't going to come down over us. And apologies in advance to any hikers that are going to come through late evening we are sort of blocking the main path but plenty of room around the side I'm sure people will hopefully understand uh, I think I got this ball in the beginning of Devon found it on the path Barney's obsessed with fetching tennis balls at home oh easy pups ready go on then There's no sign to indicate it, but according to the OS map, this is the Dorset border. We made it. Wow. Uh, so that's Devon finished. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. Quite a big difference between North and South Devon. A lot more towns down here, I suppose. So a bit more civilised. But uh, yeah, that last section, uh, I think we're ready to end the rutted, muddy paths. Uh, but it's quite a nice change for us. A lot of people assume we just want the coastline paths, you know. Uh, but it's actually, when you're doing the whole thing, it breaks it up when you get different sections like that. And we're ready to, to face the next set of coombs and cliffs. Um, so yeah, Dorset, here we come. <laughs>